I think you can't be a good critic if you don't have the strong taste. You've got to have, and then the person, it's just up to the reader to say, do I agree with this person most of the time, or do you agree with this person some of the time? Or even if I disagree, do I learn anything from reading the review? Is it interesting, the dialogue? So I used to always think of reviews as a, as a dialogue. Here's what I think about, I went to a show last night, or I listened to a record last night, here's what I think. What do you think? I, I, I try to write it as, you know, it's almost like blogs today. You know, blogs today are very informal and so forth like that, where you're really writing to somebody else and it's not really, thought. I try to write in a very conversational, very accessible way way with the design of trying to say, here's what I think, what do you think? And I used to love it when I'd get letters or emails back from people saying what they say. So I try to give some information. I try to explain why. I try to explain as much why I thought this person was as good as, as a bold statement this person is good. I think it does no good to say just the bold declaration, say this person's a great artist. Why is this person a great artist? What is it? Like when I read movie reviews today, you can, you can find some dazzling writing, but uh, and the person says they like the review, but they don't convince you why. They don't tell you why they like it or don't like it. It's you know it seems like. Uh there's that, there's that critical factor of explanation that's missing. So I think, but I th so I think a good critic has to have a strong opinion, uh, and in but doing that you'll get branded. Like one of my favorite people in the record business is Clive Davis, and and for years he's accused me of not being able to hear some of the best music of our time. The people he likes, you know, like Whitney Houston and the the, the pure pop entertainer, as opposed to the raw, ragged, edgy. Uh, rock and roll or country or hip hop or you know that kind of gritty street kind of thing. He thinks I'm really into that world, and I, I so I, I says, you know, we'll, we'll see each other. I've got this new artist, Alicia Keys. You're not going to appreciate her, but and I said, but I actually did like Alicia Keys a lot. Uh, but but the, but certainly you do get branded as I was probably known as the, you know, the, you know probably. I don't, you know, I don't know. It was hard because I, I loved things. I used to get letters all the time. How can you like the Sex Pistols and Donna Summer and the Eagles and uh, Chris Christopherson and uh, uh, NWA and so forth? So, you, so you, I think as a critic, you have to work as hard as you can against being a single vision of something. You have to recognize any kind of music can be good. My, the thing I often said was, uh, or say is that 90% of every genre, if it's reggae or R&B or hip hop, or, or pop or country or, or punk is, is derivative. It's just one artist copying what somebody else has done. So you're always looking for that 10% of every field that's really good. And, and every field has somebody who's good. Now some fields I think generate more excellence than others because more people are probably into it. That audience seeks, you know, seeks uh, more adventurous music and so forth. Uh, like Bob Marley comes along in reggae though. Is, no, is anybody better over the last 30 years than Bob Marley? He's fantastic. But reggae hasn't produced a lot of other great you know, artists like that. that. At that time though, they had Peter Tosh and Jimmy Cliff and a lot of people like that. But I haven't found in recent years the same kind of, but see maybe it's just that it's still there, but a person who's as great as Bob Marley comes along and focuses your attention. So you really pay a serious attention to what's going on. You And, it, and so if he's not there, you, you kind of miss it because you're not paying as much attention to a feel like that. But, you know, if you look at country music, Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings, those are incredible artists, you know, that are, and you go into rock and you go into, and, you know, in, in pure pop, uh, there's some, there's been some fantastic artists, but, so don't ever think any field is, you know, is, is void of talent, you know, there, there's probably somebody really good in that field, but, and so try to understand and try to appreciate it and try to, you know, one of the hardest things when, was when hip hop came along, because boy, oh boy, the whole death to, to disco movement, you know, thinking every disco record is terrible, and it wasn't true because the Bee Gees made some great disco records, Donna Summer made some great disco records. There were individual records. There weren't great artists as much, and there weren't great albums made. And, and see, the, the rock 60s culture was an album culture, so if, if you, if, Amy Stewart made a great single in called Knock on Wood, and we said, well, that, but she's, that, it's only one record. Yeah, but that's a great record, so you can appreciate it for kind of what it is, but, uh, but anyway, th that same hatred of disco was kind of put on hip hop at first, because, oh, it's just these guys boasting about this, and, and uh, there's no talent in it, and so forth, but as soon as I heard uh, Public Enemy and Run DMC and some of those early things, I used to really champion hip hop, saying, you know, there really is some interesting artists to me. Uh, it had a lot, it was the same kind of street thing that rock and roll had been, but I can't tell you the number of letters and emails, and the weren't emails, no, they, but letters and phone calls I'd get saying, you've just lost your mind, this stuff's just crazy, this stuff's terrible, and so forth. And hip hop has gone through, they've had a lot of terrible artists, but they have some, you know, just, you know, if you take Public Enemy, I mean, the Public Enemy to my mind was like, you know, it, uh, it was like he, Chuck D was doing what Dylan was doing, you know, he was like telling, talking about things, and then Ice Cube I thought was just incredible, and, and Tupac, and, uh, 
Eminem, I just think, you know, I think Eminem is just, I can't tell you how much respect I have for that guy as an artist. Uh, I, I think I worry about him a little bit right now because I think he's having some, you know, I mean, his, his the wife troubles, the, uh, his best friend got shot and stuff. So I think there is, and I think, because I think if you look at those songs, there, you know, I think Eminem had a lot of trouble upbringing. I think those songs aren't just made up, you know, that, all that stuff that he writes about. But I thought he was a guy who impacted our culture in the way Elvis did. I mean, so you're always looking for those parallels. Who's exciting people? You know, who's, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things I studied, I, I was, my minor in college was sociology and social theory. So I was always, I've always been looking at why people like certain things, you know, why, what, what things change people's minds and moods and so forth. And, and Eminem came along and really, I think, revolutionized uh, hip hop in some ways. He started telling different kinds of stories and stuff, stories that hadn't been, uh, you know, he, I mean, he kind of he, he was almost like the rock and he was like the the, the rock and roll songwriter in a, in a hip hop framework and stuff.